Welcome back to another exciting episode of Rough Sketch to Final Draft. I am your host, Coach Adam, and we're here again in Season 2 with another amazing episode through our journey of growth and transformation, personal development, as we ever strive to work through our rough sketches in life, at the same time striving for personal excellence and to heal and to grow and to be a guiding light for others in our own personal journeys and in the lives of those that we love. And today, in that regard, we have an amazing guest here for the show. Her name is Lisa, and we want to welcome her to our incredible family. Lisa, would you like to introduce yourself for the family? Absolutely. So my name is Lisa Campbell. I am a full-time personal trainer. I'm also a former, possibly former, athlete and figure competitor. Um, that's what I do full time. I've dedicated my whole life to fitness and health and helping other people along their journey. Beautiful. We're happy to have you here. Truly honored. And it's it's an amazing portion in the sense of being able to strive towards personal excellence to really hone in on fitness and health. There's mental fitness, there's physical fitness, there's financial fitness. What is it about physical fitness that really inspired you to get involved in the industry in the first place? many years ago, because your journey has been going on for an evolving and transforming. What really got you into fitness in the first place? Mm. So I think it started with a lot of a lot of the same reasons why people get into fitness is it started with insecurities, to be honest. It started with insecurity is not being happy with my body, not being happy with the way I felt mm. and wanting to make a change. I had no idea then just how yeah. far I would take it. Um, I feel like over the years, my reasons have changed. And it's more or less like what keeps me in fitness rather than yeah. what got me here. But initially it was just that it was just overcoming insecurities and really wanting to mm empower myself and at that time when i first started i had no clue what i was doing i had no clue yeah. i was clueless yeah. i was doing all the wrong things that you could possibly do or it's not eating enough i was doing way too much cardio i was what most people call skinny fat yeah that was yeah. that was me um i had no clue i would become a yep. nbc athlete figure competitor no clue fitness model, sponsored athlete. I had no clue. I, I, I would have never believed in a million years. What keeps me going now is honestly wanting to uphold that self-love that I obviously mm. got into without having. And I kind of use yeah. this as my way of cultivating that. So yeah, that's a little bit mm. about why, how I got started and why. I love that. And that's incredible with the fact of, of getting into the industry and wanting to inspire people in your life and basically being a role model for others in the sense of being able to jump into something before you really have all the answers. Is that something that you find is important that you would want to give as a message to others that are out there to really, if they have an internal drive to do something and they're afraid because they don't have all the answers yet to just dive in and believe in themselves and figure it out as they go? So I'll be 100% honest with you. Mm. Um, part of that I did not hear, but I'm going to answer to the best of my ability anyway. <laughs> um, right. As far as being the example and like role model leader to others, it's a little intimidating to think of myself that way. But um, in the big scheme of things, yeah, I think it's important. I think that's also another reason why I uphold a certain standard. And not that I put like, well, you know what? Yeah, I do put some pretty crazy expectations on myself, but it's also because I have a belief system that I can achieve them because time and again, fitness has been something that has given me the platform and ability to prove that to myself. Not so much about proving it to others, but proving that to myself. And if that level of mental fortitude is inspiring to other people, then I think I have a responsibility to continue with that. Mm. I love yeah. that. To live in an authentic way. If you're going to be that kind of a role model for others, that you have to show up for yourself that way and model that behavior. Yeah. Exactly. I can't tell anybody how to live their life if I'm not living what I, what I preach. Mm. Indeed. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things that really resonated with me when I first found your content is that there's such an authenticity about the challenges, the struggles, the achievements, 
and the and the truth, even in your stories, when you actually post them on a regular basis, when you're just raw and authentic with your followers, letting them know where the proctor's picks are, letting them know when you're up, when you're down, and just being real. I find that to be so inspiring in that sense, because in the world of today where social media, right, taking a step back, holding space in, in a loving way for anyone that's out there doing anything in the world of in motivation, inspiration, there's this idea or expectation to make things look and sound such a certain way, maybe perfect or idealistic. And I think mm. we're getting into this realm now where we're looking for the things that are realistic and raw. And you, you exemplify that in a really great way. Wow. Thank you. That's mm. overwhelming in a sense to hear, but also uh, exciting because I think a big part of where I am now and how I was with my platform and fitness before I lived in that bubble of, and then I would also second guess myself too, because of the, the, I have to look a certain way, or I have to present myself a certain way, or if I say a certain thing, then people are going to think this. And then now I'm at the point where it's like, think less about that and mm -hmm. more about, am I putting out content that brings value to the people that are watching? Am I posting things that I enjoy that are true to myself, but mm. also like relatable, not as much of like, are other people going to think this is great or, oh, I, I look a certain way today, so I can't post that. Like, get out of your own way. And so to speak, you know, mm. that's kind of where I'm at now. <laughs> Love that. Right. Just peel back the layers, be authentic, allow yourself to expose the, the real you, right. And in the, in the truest sense, of, because in that regard, I believe it resonates with the idea, right. That we're always really striving for. Though it's a challenge. It really is to overcome I hold space for those who are in this challenge is to live that authentic message. When we really want to be that, that we know that when we actually put our true selves out there, which is risky, we will get the people that are meant to be drawn towards us versus just trying to look the right way to get the ability to be accepted by the masses. But when we do that, somehow we lose ourselves in that whole mixing of things when we're not really being ourselves. If you're loved and liked by everybody, there might be something that's lacking in the authenticity, right? In that truest sense, when, when you really start focusing in on who you are, you'll find your tribe and your tribe will find you. And I think that's a beautiful part about the transformation journey. Would you agree? Yeah, I feel like a big part of developing a sense of self and a, an identity and self-love is not doing things to appease someone else or their opinion yeah. of you. Like if you do things on the basis of how other people are going to respond and feel about it, then you're in essence handing over your power on how yeah. you feel about yourself and mm -hmm. what you represent to the narrative of somebody else's opinion. So it defeats the purpose. It's like you're no longer actually living what you're preaching to these people. You're right. lying to not them, yourself. Right. That's never going to be fulfilling. Mm. I yeah. love the way you phrased it. Handing over your power to somebody else, right? In the, in the sense that there's two different forms in our world that we're normally homogenized and socialized to think. We have to either ask for forgiveness or we ask for permission. And you, you nailed it with the fact of handing over your power. And I think it's one of those moments when to hold our own power, we have to give permission to others for their opinions to get into us, right? So we always do hold the power. We are empowered in that regard unless we want their opinions to get in past our defenses, past our outer exterior. Permission has to be granted for them to be able to get in. So I think one of the beautiful things that you're sharing with the audience here, Lisa, is the fact of hold your power and don't allow that permission to peek through in that regard. Stay strong, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. I think the biggest thing that I could take away from that, and like I'm saying this to you as I'm almost reminding myself of it, which is yeah. I am giving permission to others when I when I become vulnerable and, and expose myself that way, I'm giving permission to others to have an opinion about me, but I am yeah. not allowing permission for that opinion to influence the way I feel about myself. Mm. I love that. Yes. Yeah. Chef's kiss. Beautifully put. Yeah. Beautifully put. So um, in that sense, as we're looking for authenticity, when we're searching for these, some of the struggles that we face are authentically challenging, right? And some of the things that we go through in that regard are lovingly tumultuous, right? They are 
raw that grind us in life in ways that we would have never have imagined. What are some of the things that in that process have brought you strength while you're going through the challenges in life that might be a benefit for our beautiful audience here to kind of let them know the things that you looked forward to and the things that really brought you strength to be able to pull you through your most challenging times? Ooh. Um, you know, it's interesting because I used to have this, and honestly, it got me through a lot, which was this hyper independence, right? Mm-hmm. Which was, yeah. and I think a lot of that is systemic from different events that has happened to me in my life and traumas and all of those things, which I know I'm not alone in. I know a lot of people have experienced as well. And so there was this sense of feeling like I couldn't depend on anybody. And so my mental strength was coming from almost like a level of anger and resentment, which is I will go after this no matter what anybody tells me. And and it did get me through a lot, but now I'm at this point in my life where it's like, wow, you know what? Less of the hyper independence, but finding strength in numbers, which is like, you're right. You eventually, when you come into a place of like authenticity and, and vulnerability and self love and, and total surrender to that, which yeah. is like total surrender to your highest self, I now find that like my strength comes from the people and environments that I have around me. And so, if there's anything that I can give to my, my past self, which it, it is level up your environment, level mm. up the people that are around you. If that means you have to be alone for a little while, know that you're capable of that. And it's only making you stronger and better preparing you to receive the people that you are deserving of having in your life, you know? And I think like now where I'm at, it's, I have to remind myself what, what keeps me strong and pushing through is knowing one, my worth, my value, that I deserve to have good things and good people in my life. And then taking actions to prove that to myself and others around me every day. Absolutely. Being in that for you space, being in that proactiveness for Lisa, for yourself, not just putting it on the back burner and really making sure that we're being someone that shows up for ourselves, not just for our our community, but definitely for ourselves and modeling that behavior for ourselves in the mirror, making sure that when we go out, we're making sure that we took care of Lisa as Lisa now is full in her cup to be able to pour forth to others. I find that to always be so empowering to be able to give to coaches and coaches to give to their, I would say. um, Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, in that sense, when we're growing through our journey and we're reminded of what we're actually working towards, the things that we end up aiming towards are also just as important in that regard, right? And the thing of it is that I like to understand with anyone that I'm ever coaching with or anyone that I get a chance to mix with um, is the fact of where the heart is in the targeting of what we're actually setting our intentions towards. And and just share with the audience a little bit because obviously you you assist others in achieving goals, big goals, losing weight, 90 pounds, transforming their life. Um you know, I'm sure that there's a life coaching aspect in there always. It couldn't ever be divorced from that aspect as you're coaching people's mental health to achieve their their actual physical dreams. What are some of the principles that you like to enact with reminding individuals that it's not necessarily just the 90 pounds that you want to lose, but it's why? What kind of lifestyle are you going to have and achieve from this? Can you kind of share with the audience a little bit about your philosophies there? Yeah, so... I always make it very clear with my clients and anybody that I work with that if we're working together, this isn't just for the the eight, the six, the 12, the however many weeks they want to be with me program, that yeah. we're making a mental shift of we're looking at this over the next year, over the next two years, that yeah. we're looking at this as a lifestyle change. But yeah. I think like the biggest, at least my, from my experience, the biggest factor that and role that I play in that is beyond doing their nutrition, beyond, you know, helping them with their workouts, it's instilling the belief system that and sometimes I guess I am able to see some things before they are. And it's when they start getting those small little like wins and those results, they start like really believing in it. But from very jump, I know what somebody's capable of before they yep. even recognize it in themselves. Yeah. And coaching gives me the ability to do that in a way that's rewarding for both of us. Because I know that me as a person, and I think this is why I do well as a coach, me as a person, I would be that friend, you know, that would always give, 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 give. 
and they would keep doing the same thing over and over again, right? And then they come back to me for advice later on. I'm like, hey, friend, I already gave you advice. Stop coming back if you don't take it, you know? And I was pouring my cup out, but I wasn't getting anything in return. And I realized that, like, oh, that's because I'm supposed to be coaching people, people that people that have that internal drive and desire, but they just haven't ever had that reinforcement or accountability to really show them the way mm -hmm. and and show up for them in a way that, maybe they don't get elsewhere. And so I, I, my biggest thing is, is instilling that belief system yeah. and, and in some ways challenging their own belief system hmm. and challenging the narrative that they've been telling themselves. You know, I don't, I will never reinforce someone's negative talk about themselves or their situation. I won't reinforce it. I will reinforce that they are capable, that hmm. this is possible, that, everything that they set out to do is going to happen. They just have to trust. And just like I had to fully surrender to having a community by my side and no longer being this hyper independent, I can do it on my own kind of person. Yeah. It's I'm asking my clients and the people that I coach to also have that surrender in my guidance. And that really comes down to just building trust. So trust yeah. above everything. I love that. I think it resonates well with the audience as well from the rough sketch of final draft to the coach Adam side of things. They're going to embrace you so lovingly. This community is such a, a healing place of just acceptance and, and growth that that's, it's huge. in the fact of understanding that we need to be there for ourselves and to even get over these ideas about the fact of being hyper independent. I'm sure that a lot of us out there in the world have been kind of trained socialized in our, in our modern world. That that's supposed to be the goal. Um, get the mansion, get the Ferrari, get the six figure income and do it all by yourself. And then, you know, you're now you're set kind of a thing. And it's amazing to listen in the sense of someone who's gone through such a beautiful journey, such as you, Lisa, it's cathartic in that regard for the audience to be able to listen to how you've grown and how you've come to be this amazing individual on the other side. And we're still going through this entire end thing. I always like to remind our audience, um, that none of us have all the answers that anyone that we ever bring here as a guest on the show in that regard, we're humble. We're learning as we're growing and we're authentically here and showing up in the true sense. Um, and for that, it, I think it's a lot of a, a moment where individuals can really resonate with the messages of the transformations that we're all going through. And it's really just, it's a space in that sense to literally listen to others who are going through these changes because how often do we ever hear about it in our regular world on a day-to-day -day basis? Very few of us ever hear vulnerable conversations show up in an authentic um, way in which we peel back the layers of our skin and expose who we are, the challenges that we're going through. So I, I just want to pause really quick for the sake of the audience as well. I usually do this in the sense and just recognize you, Lisa, for having the courage and the authenticity to come on the show. Um, I appreciate you and I acknowledge you. And I'm, I'm just so glad that we get a chance to have amazing conversations with individuals such as yourself. It's just a genuine honor. So um, with that, as we transition into maybe the second half of the show, now that we're coming up to about 16 minutes in the, uh, in the hour, is there something that we have um, coming up for 2024 that you might be able to shine some light on, on where you're guiding maybe some of the coaching that you're doing or ways in which you're um, developing a program that you might have that you might want to talk about right now that just kind of is something that's in your world that you'd like to kind of have as a chance and opportunity to share with the audience here. Oh, absolutely. Um, my biggest focus, because I've been doing full-time training in person for a very long time, and yep. I've now shifted into the online space. Hmm. And I really enjoy the ability that I have to really connect with somebody in a, in a very vulnerable way because everything's, you know, exposed through the phone, through the talking on the phone. And a lot of people, it's interesting to see that that almost leaves people feeling a little bit more vulnerable than when I'm seeing them face to face. Yeah. I'm not sure why that is. I'm sure eventually like I'll discover the psychology behind that. But, but what's yeah. cool about that is some, I think in some ways it allows somebody to have the freedom to like take the risk of being vulnerable with me and being honest and then giving me a chance to kind of dive into what's really creating, you know, the obstacles that have happened um, in their lives or stood in the way of them achieving these goals. But for 2024, I am going full in with that, with trying to take on as many clients as I can to help them, you know, achieve their goals and do it in a way where I'm I'm one-on-one -on -one with them. The conversation that I'm having with you, I'm having it with them. 
we, we are going all in and I'm fully committed, you know? So that's kind of what my 2024 looks like. It's exciting. And we're going to be yeah. a part of that journey. The Refs Get to Final Draft family will be with you all the way. Um, and awesome. in that introspective journey, while you're actually being there for clients in that sense, what are some of the things that excite you the most about being there with their journey? I mean, as coaches to coaches, coaches have coaches, therapists have therapists, right? What are some of the things that really excite you about being there for others? What is, what is that for the, the audience's benefit? Go ahead and share with us. Ooh, you know, I think honestly, the most exciting part is the humility that I gain from recognizing like, oh, wow, I do have something that can help yeah. other people, <laughs> you know, and I, I know that sounds silly, but it yeah. always takes me aback that even when I do have coaches reach out to me that, you know, need help and assistance with their own coaching, you know, and it's, it's interesting because it's, it's like, really, I can help, but I guess I can. And, and I think what gets me excited about that is not only seeing my clients getting results, but seeing these coaches getting results and coming back to me and being like, oh my God, it works, you know? And I think yeah. like above all else, like that's what gets me pumped up for it is knowing that that value that I feel like I used to seek outside of myself when I first got into fitness yeah. is now value that I have cultivated within myself that is now being shown and reflected back to me through mm. my practices and what I'm doing and being able to help other people. I no longer have to seek that. It's finding me. And so I think that's what gets me excited. I love that. Things yeah. have come around full circle for you for where now what you're giving is also filling you back up. Is that something you're saying? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That'd be my okay. tip to anybody is make sure that you are filling up your cup beyond full capacity because then it's so much easier to attract in what you want because people right. are going to see it flowing from you and they're going to want, they're going to want to be a part of that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I like the saying, there's so many colloquial phrases to kind of sum things up in the regard that I believe that when we, we live in a, in a society and where we're always thinking that we deserve things, and if you break down it in Latin, the actual, just the word itself, deserve, D is the, serve is serve. So it's the service, right? So if you want to deserve something, then the, the word itself, the etymology of it literally means I must give service in order to deserve service. It's just, it's already encompassing in that actual thing. And I just, I love that idea about the fact of when we give, it fills up our cup because when we think that we deserve so much and we feel like we're not getting from anyone out there in the world, typically, if we just start serving others, it will reciprocate back to us in this natural universal flow that just works out so beautifully. So I think that um, the way that you summarized it there was just perfect. And I wanted to paraphrase for the uh, encapsulation of the audience there in that regard. And by the way, I need to do this also now that I'm getting better at the YouTube channel and the podcasting. The family is always reminding me to please say it throughout the course of the episode. If you're loving this, if you want to share some love for Lisa, don't forget to like down below and subscribe, share with a family member, you know, pass it around. Um, thank you, fam, for all your messages. There's usually about 300 of you every single week. So thank you so much. I'm doing better. Thank you for making us better. Um, and so let's, let's transition from the idea of filling our cup and the gratitude that that fills us up with in the motivation that we really feel towards being coaches and being there for others. What are some of the bigger challenges that you see now that your clients are facing in the world that you're actually dealing with on a, on a regular basis? And how do you overcome those challenges for the benefit of your clients? Ooh, okay. that's a tough one because there's, you know, some challenges are very subjective, so it depends on the person, but the biggest thing that I have a lot of my clients face is time. Yeah. And it's a matter of, you know, time management, um, <laughs> but also reprioritizing their life yeah. in essence. You know, when they come to see me, I have a lot of clients that come to train with me and it starts out with just training, right? We're just going to work out a little bit. Right. And then it turns into the next step, which is, okay, we're going to start tracking our food. Wait, what? Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, we're going to start getting, I, and I don't care as much about what you're logging. I want you to just get in the habit of logging. You know, yeah. small, small incremental changes, but the biggest hurdle has been 
you know, finding the time to do these things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't want to be the punishing trainer. I don't want to ever make somebody feel um, like they're doing something wrong just because they aren't prioritizing. What I do do, though, is I challenge them every time they come in to see me and I'm asking them follow up questions and I'm asking them very direct and pointed questions. And I can promise you in that sense, that definitely helps them to overcome some of these aspects of their training. Because again, it's accountability, what I do, right? And a lot of people don't have that, not only from outside, but within themselves, you know? And the biggest way that we overcome these challenges, and it could be anything, it doesn't have to be just time, but it's simply me holding them accountable. So every time I talk to them, every time I see them, this Mm -hmm. is what we're going to address. And if it makes my client uncomfortable to give me answers that um, are less than ideal, um, they usually are more inclined to want to overcome some of these, these challenges. And it can be just small little changes here and there. Um, And then over time it builds up accumulatively to, you know, the big change and the big impact. But I think that's the biggest way that I overcome some of those challenges with time is I, I think that, and also leading by example. You know, I'm swamped all day. It is exhausting to get to the gym. It can be exhausting to cook, but my exhaustion does not prohibit me from doing that anyway. Very, very true. I love that. And the accountability and the authenticity of that in that regard. I think you touched on it before. So we're just going to circle back to it as well to add it to this component of this line of thought processes here for the, um, the questioning is the fact of how do you establish trust? And the importance of trust, perhaps, in your philosophical personal training views. Share a little bit about that because I think it's fundamental to who you are and one of the main reasons why I think that you are successful and incredible at what you're doing. So I'm going to give you the full ability to share ins and outs about um, trust and how you establish that. You know, I think it starts with me having faith in my client. and. Yeah. It, it starts with me having faith, blind faith, right? Because I really don't know. I, yeah. I, I'm meeting these people, whether it's online or whether it's in person, and I have no clue what they're going to, but I have, I have this unwavering faith and belief in them. Mm-hmm. And in some sense, I think that level of belief and, and reinforcement and, and me leading on blind faith is giving them trust yeah. and me being open with, my story and my journey, um, giving them a platform and the ability, whether it's in person or online, giving them the ability to share their story, their vulnerability and, and being someone who can genuinely listen Mm. without interrupting and telling them all the things that they're not, you know, doing right. You know, that's not my job. Um, and I would never want to do that to somebody. Uh, but I would like to be able to listen and then just like I would with a friend, yeah. be able to give them, you know, my advice. But ultimately, I think the trust that they have in me is from me having unwavering faith and belief in them. I like that. I yeah. really do. Okay. And with trust being the unwaveringness in that regard, they really believe that you've got their best interests at heart. And I think that's one of the most powerful things about even for the message of this, for this episode in that regard, is the fact of having a coach who's going to be there for you and really having the ability to understand that what makes the difference there between just having someone and also someone who has the background of being a coach to be accountable with you, not just for you, to anyone who doesn't have a coach out there, that's really the rub. That's the difference, fam. Like if you're looking for a life coach, if you're looking for a personal training coach, if you're looking for something, Truly, the certifications and everything else like that, accolades aside, you know, master's degrees and so on and so forth, those are great. The point is, though, is do they have the heart and are they really being there with you? Are they carrying an investment in the regard of whether or not you're getting to the goals that you want and making sure that they're being achieved in a way in which is healthy for you? And Lisa is a phenomenal example of that in her coaching career and in her personal fitness life and and shows up in, in her own life that way as well. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to have this amazing conversation um, with this incredible, incredible woman in that regard to have the ability to share some of the principles, the toolkits, the practical um, life skills that she really does implement into her business. It's just phenomenal. And to be able to 
here, how they're implemented, I think is always beneficial because sometimes in life, we think that it's challenging to do these exemplary acts of being a better person. And sometimes it's great just to hear another individual make it sound like it's so common and so natural because it is, but we just don't have examples like that. And that's one of the reasons why I, I really wanted to draw the attention to the fact of you genuinely being an excellent role model in the truest sense that you embody these characteristics um, and you put it forth throughout the aspects of your life. And I find that that is incredible. Now to that exact point, do you find it challenging in that regard to show up every day and do these things. I know that it's superhero in the morning, superhero in the evening and a sip of coffee here and there. So I know, I know we're, we're, we're heroes here in that regard, but uh, you know, I, and we're real too. So what are some of the struggles that you do go through on a regular basis? What are those? Ooh, um, I, you know, sometimes I think it can be um, overwhelming for anybody to, I guess, realize that they have an influence or impact over not just people that are following them right but it could be people in your life that you're ultimately you're ultimately setting an example whether it's good or bad but you're setting one regardless and people are taking notice and then their behavior can sometimes be predicated or influenced on yours mm -hmm. and then that level of responsibility sure it can be overwhelming but i think it also can be empowering so I, I don't I, I don't like to reinforce that it's um, a challenge because yeah. uh, other than maybe a challenge that I'm willingly taking on. There you go. A challenge to better myself, right? Yes. Not a challenge yep. that is difficult and that it's daunting and it's I'm dreading right. doing it, but it's I'm challenging myself to become a better version of myself because that version of me is impacting yep. and influencing the people around me. And it's either gonna ultimately be for the better or the worse, right? And and I want it to be the positive. Yes. So I guess that in that sense, um, that's where the challenge becomes something that I'm I'm a willing participant of. And yeah. every day I wake up and it's a new day. So it's a new yeah. challenge. And so right. I can either give in or keep going. Yeah. There's only one option in my book. You keep going. <laughs> you know, you keep going yeah. and then continue to strive to become a better version of yourself, you know, today and tomorrow than you were yesterday. Love that. Perfectly simplified mm -hmm. and ex excellently articulated. I couldn't agree with you more. Chef's kiss. Cheers. <laughs> um and it's just so true, right? The camera's always rolling, no matter what, whether or not we want to participate in the day-to-day -day of life or not, the camera is always running and the clock is always ticking. So regardless whether or not we want to believe it or live up to it, fam, it is always rolling. We got it. We got to go. The show is on. Until we exit stage left, we are on stage 100% dressed in full decorum and ready to go for life. So show up and learn to show up for yourself. And show it for others as lisa is uh being an, ex an amazing example for today well at this point in time as we're kind of kind of transitioning in the third half of the show here i always like to open it up for my wonderful guests to be able to share anything that's on your heart and mind that you wanted to maybe go into a little bit deeper or if there's something that you would like to bring up for the sake of personal growth and striving towards excellence or um, any type of material that you feel that's on your heart that you feel like today would be beneficial to add to it. So Lisa, anything that you would like to share? Ooh, yeah. You know what? I would love to just, just instill to the audience, mm -hmm. the importance of holding your flame high and not allowing other people around you to, to influence the way that you lead your life. Because yeah. a lot of times when you're on this journey and you start making improvements in your life and you start kind of leveling up in a sense, there's yeah. going to be people around you that you would have never believed would be uncomfortable and non-supportive, <laughs> yeah. you know, um, but they, they will exist. Those, yep. those people exist. And sometimes they're people that are close to you and that's even worse, right? But the importance of filling your own cup up and mm -hmm. not dimming your light yeah. um, to make other people feel comfortable with you 
is so important because it's the only that's the bridge that gets you to the other side of where you're going and where you're supposed to be and i think if there's anything that i can instill in the audience is don't ever dim your light to make other people feel comfortable allow other people to be uncomfortable because that's also going to give them an opportunity to level up as well you're giving them a challenge yeah so there you go okay and we raise to that challenge we don't back down from that challenge Lisa mm -hmm. told it. She said it here first. That's right. That's right. We see those challenges and we, we overcome those. That's what we do. That's what we do on a daily. And we do our best, as you are saying, just to reiterate, we do our best to be that for others at all times because that camera never stops rolling. It never does. Well, in that sense, is there something about the idea for striving for personal excellence and maybe just to kind of have one last idea to codify and get more in depth about as, as we strive towards personal excellence, what would be one of the main reasons to be able to do that for oneself? Even when we're questioning ourselves in our personal development life and journey, we've all gone through things and we're working through things. What is maybe one of the, I don't want to use the word incentive, but what is, what is one of the caveats in that regard to work towards personal excellence in any regard, mental health, fitness wise, financial fitness wise, anything. What are some of the things that you have found is a great idea um, to share about what the importance of striving towards personal excellence is? You now, the way I think about it, and this is how I approach things now <laughs> is um, very like, you know, yeah. I don't know what could happen. So yeah. why not just find out? Like, why not just do the thing? Yeah. And see what happens. You know, because I don't, I do, because every negative voice you have in your head will tell you all the things that could go wrong, right? Yeah. All you need is that one thing that could possibly go right. And sure, there's a big question mark for everybody. Nobody knows if that's going to happen, right? Nothing's guaranteed. But if there's a possibility that it could, wouldn't you want to find out? But release, like, release the expectation that it's going to and have fun in the process of it. But ultimately, you never know. It only takes, like, that one time of doing that one thing for things to just catapult. So, like, the way I've been looking at it now is just, like, just keep doing it. Just keep doing yep. the thing. Just keep doing whatever it is that makes you wildly uncomfortable. But it's something that you enjoy and you love and, and keep putting yourself out there because you just never know what's going to happen. And I don't want to, God forbid, God forbid anything were to ever happen in my life where I would have mm. to look back with regret. I, uh -uh. Mm. I, mm -mm. I've been there already once in my life and yeah. I feel like in my, in a sense, I'm getting a second chance this time around and I am not screwing it up. I am doing all of the stuff, no matter what. Just to see, <laughs> just to see, just to see what could happen. You know, why not? Why not? I love yeah. that. Let's light some fires. I like that. Inspire. That's right. Let's, let's set that fire inside of people's souls and just inspire those as much as we can and live, live life with taking some risks because it's risky no matter what, right? You either risk it and it doesn't go the way you want, or you risk not doing it at all. And years later, looking back on, I should have done it. I should have done it. So it's a risk either way. And we do a great job of doing our best to weigh out that pro and con. And it's a tough one. It's really, really a tough one. Interesting. Absolutely. I, you yeah. know, you could risk it all, right? And, and maybe it doesn't work out, but at least you did it. You tried. Or you That's could right. just not do take the risk. And you know it's guaranteed from that? You're going to fail. So yeah. I would rather take... I'd rather take the ladder. Like, let's, 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 let's just see what happens. We'll keep going after it. But at least I could say I tried, you know? Right, right. No, I love that. I do, I do. Living with no regrets. I really, really do. No doubts, right? Just jump in anyways. Right back to the beginning of the story when we were starting this actual episode now in the sense of literally talking about it. Whether or not if we have all the answers ahead of time, this syncs up just perfectly. That we just jump in. Even before we have all the answers, jump in and figure it out. You don't want to live with the regret of not trying. I'd rather have the, re I guess the regret of, of trying and it not working the way that I wanted it to, 
in the truest sense, which is we, we're being advocates for rather than not trying at all. Yeah. Gosh, you have summarized so many good, good points for the sake of the audience in this beautiful conversation today, Lisa. I'm just so grateful for this. So as, as I'm going to kind of bring it up to the end here where we're at the, uh, the 36 minute mark in that regard, I just want to again, acknowledge you and recognize you for being so gracious with your time to be able to connect. I know that we're connecting from, for the sake of the audience, from Florida all the way to California. So we're trying to bridge the whole entire country here for, for the sake of the audience. Um, we, we will leave the links down below to be able to find you. Where, where can people find you and where are you at and, and what are you up to there? Let, let people know where they can find your socials. You can find me on Instagram. So it's at Lisa Marie Inked, and that's I-N-K-E-D, not I-N-C-E-D. Yep. Okay. Um, I also have a TikTok too, which is Lisa Marie Inked. So go find okay. me there. I post okay. lots of fun videos and content and lots of fitness stuff and all my clients. So, yeah. Okay. Those will be down below for you, fam. I have yet to get on the TikTok thing. Everyone on on here in our family and on Coach Adam want me to get on TikTok. So maybe maybe Lisa will get me going. I don't know. Maybe she can walk me through that. I have no idea what to do on that thing. So maybe maybe we can have a conversation. But uh, anyways, I, I've just genuinely enjoyed this thoroughly. And I want to thank you. So thank you for being a part of this incredible journey. And we look forward to maybe having you as a guest again in the future for season three. So um Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And everybody, have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.